Hello, I'm Jenny Spangler and this is Valentine Crow and Mr. Death. It's a funny and spooky story about a boy who grew up in the Foundling Hospital and is now going out into the world as an apprentice, but due to a paperwork mistake, he's accidentally apprenticed to the Grim Reaper. The Grim Reaper is death personified. Personification is a literary technique where you take an idea or a concept, something that you can't normally touch or see in real life and they turn it into a character which can be interacted with and spoken with to try and catch the idea of that thing. Here's a picture of the Grim Reaper from the book. And you've probably seen pictures like this before. Death as a skeleton in a long cloak carrying a scythe, sometimes also carrying an hourglass or a watch. Uh, but why does he look like that? Well, I think the skeleton part is fairly obvious. You don't see a skeleton while you're alive. Um, so the skeleton is obviously a symbol of death. But the scythe is a farming tool, which might seem a strange choice for death to be carrying around. We first see him pictured like that in artworks from the 14th century, which is when black death was sweeping across Europe. An absolutely terrifying time where people were dying in absolutely huge numbers that we'd never seen before. It must have been extremely scary for the people who were alive then, especially because they didn't really have any understanding of how the disease was spreading and they couldn't really do much to stop it. It makes sense then that they started picturing death holding the scythe. I'll just show you the scythe again there, which is a long blade on the end of a stick. This was used for reaping, which is cutting down your crops when they finish growing. So you plant your wheat, it grows up tall, and then you use this long curved blade to cut down a large amount of the stalks of grain in one go. It must have felt to people back then that death was coming into villages and just taking away people in one huge swoop. And so it's no surprise that these people who largely were farmers themselves started to picture death as carrying a scythe and coming in to harvest the souls and cut people down in their prime. It's a bit of a grim thought. Um, well, it is a grim reaper. We still use that kind of picture of death today, even though for most of us, we don't live in a farming community and even if we did, we're not seeing people using scythes anymore. Perhaps if we were going to come up with that character today, we'd have death riding a combine harvester or something like that. Personification isn't just for death. We use it for all kinds of characters. You're probably familiar with Jack Frost, the personification of the winter and the cold weather, or Cupid as the personification of love. And so my challenge for you today is to have a go at some personification to choose an idea or a concept and to see if you can turn it into a character. Think of the Statue of Liberty, for example, holding her torch. She is a personification of the idea of freedom. What would you come up with if you were going to make truth into a person or a character or perhaps hope? What would they wear? What would they talk like? What kind of things might you find them doing? How might they interact and behave with other characters? Have a go, choose a concept, an idea, something that in real life you can't touch, but other people would know what you meant if you were talking about it, the seasons or an emotion. And have a go at turning that thing into a character through personification. You can write a description of them, you can even do an illustration and draw the character like we've got here. And you could even try and put them in a scene with another person so that they can have a conversation and we can learn about their personality. I hope you have fun, enjoy the challenge and happy reading.